Hello everyone, Brett back, High Altitude Scale Modeling. Finally getting around to part two of my B-17G build. Part one we left off, I was doing the photo hits on the seat. And... I started doing photo hits on the cockpit, floor, and walls. And you see, all this photo etch is just for the interior. All this photo etch is just for the interior. So, what I'm going to do today is take a break from photo etch and work on some sub assemblies. I love doing photo etch, but sometimes it can get tiresome. That's the word I'm looking for tiresome. And I love adding it and I want to keep doing it. Here's the seats that you saw last time, all built up and ready to go. And I haven't worked on it, except for doing some photo etch on the floorboard, since I'm doing this video. So we're going to do some sub-assemblies. That's a good way to keep yourself fresh and away from getting burned out from doing all the photo etch and everything. So I think we're going to start with doing some work right here on step 15 with the bomb bays. There's no photo etch, so we're going to put the bomb bay part together. Then we're going to put the bombs together. We're not going to do this part because none of this will be painted yet. Then we're going to do some seat sub-assemblies. And more seat sub-assemblies. We're not going to do the guns because we have resin guns. And we're going to do some, maybe some wing sub-assemblies. Definitely some elevator sub-assemblies, possibly the engines. See how it goes. But it's a way to keep your... You don't have to follow the steps. You can jump around, do some sub-assemblies, keep yourself fresh and getting burned out. So, here's all the bombs. I'm just going to cut this whole section... away from the rest of the sprue so it'd be easier to get the bombs off some of this on here is for probably the bomb cart since the bombs are on there there's a couple of bomb pieces right here now remember this is how I do things you're free to do things any way you want because it's your build it's your time Here's some more fins for bombs right here. And this way I keep all the... I'm going to do that one. We're going to go here here. This way I keep all the numbers on the trees until I'm ready to use them. And I've got all the parts off I need. Put that screw off to the side. So, whatever is easier for you is how you want to do it. As you can see, I got the bombs primered, but only halfway, and I didn't primer the fins yet. So once we get these all together, probably do a complete primer coat, a light one, just so when I paint them up, it's an even color. Even though they're bombs, they don't need to be an even color. They need to be a dark olive drab, a bit of weathering on them. Bombs didn't last long to get too dirty. It's not like they reloaded them and sent them back out. So, test fit. Yeah, they fit together really well, even without having cleaned the menu up yet. But I don't know if you can see, but there's some little cleanup going to be needed there, there. Zoom in a little more. So, got my Tammy knife. Just gonna lightly 
remove the rest of the sprue points. I'm not cutting in, I'm just scraping across. So has anyone else been working on anything good? Christmas is coming up, which is why I've been delayed. I'm hoping everybody's Christmas shopping is done. That's a piece of trash. That's a piece of trash. From the time I filmed this video, Christmas is one week and one day away. I've got a couple more things to buy on my Christmas list, but nothing major. Life's bought for couple of kids things I still need to buy. <clears throat> Sorry I had to wet my whistle. I think I'm going to use Mr. Cement S for the bombs. I haven't used it for a while. I'm usually, <clears throat> as you can see I got my Tammy Extra Thin and my Deluxe Plastic Magic here. Those are my two favorite go-to glues. They both do perform a little differently. But I also got Extra Thin Quick Set over there. I've got the White Bottle Tammy over here. And I've got Mr. Cement S. Which has never let me down. I think it evaporates a little bit quicker than... Maybe if I face this the right way it fit. It evaporates a little quicker than... Tammy Extra Thin. Plus my Tammy Extra Thin bottle is almost empty and I don't feel like going and getting another one out of the storage closet. Of course. Brush won't reach in there anyway, so not much I got left. Well, we'll just go with the Mister, or sorry, with the Plastic Magic then, since I didn't realize I was almost out of Mister Cement S. I guess I've been using it more than I thought. This Plastic Magic is really good stuff. It's a little bit thicker than Extra Thin, but not as thick as the White Top Tamia. So you still get capillary action, but you get a little longer drying time. Well, looks like I'm going to be dropping bombs today. There's no attachment points on these, you just got to line them up. Make sure you're nice and smooth. Even. Let the capillary action take hold. Don't get cement on your fingers. You're going to get fingerprints. and Then you have to clean fingerprints off your bombs because there weren't giant fingerprints on bombs dropped over Europe. Those two are ready to go. off all these little ones now. I use the Tamiya sprue cutters and cut it close. Because the Tamiya sprue cutters work really well. As long as you keep them sharp and don't use them to cut things too thickly. <clears throat> Do 
dogs outside. Yesterday another bear was in the neighborhood. Which doesn't make sense to me because they should be hibernating. And I'm sure they will be soon because starting Thursday the temperature is not supposed to get above 15 degrees Fahrenheit for the foreseeable future. Uh, mountain living. I love the cold. I'd much rather be cold than hot. You can always add more layers. You can't take off. Once you get naked, you can't take off any more clothes and you'll still be hot. No real flash on these pieces. This Tamiya cutters cut really well. And they're not a brand new pair. I'll show you in a second, they do have some damage. Oh, you can see that, but you see damage on there because I did cut something that was too thick for it and I damaged the tip. Damaged that part. The tip's still okay, but I got damage right there. I have a new kind of cutter, which I can't pronounce the name. Daisapiu or something coming from China. It's supposed to be a revolutionary new type of sprue cutter. I've seen one or two reviews. It looks interesting. It only cuts with one blade instead of both. It's supposed to make a more even square cut. We'll find out. I've got my trusty Zurons that I have never had a problem with. That I still use quite a bit. Did I get this one? Nope. Alright, knife safely out of the way. Bombs lined up. Plastic magic at the ready. You said be careful because I'm, you see, I'm not flooding the area with glue. I'm just tapping it down and letting it go in. Because if I do, it'll run down the sides and I'll get fingerprints that I'll have to clean up. Excuse the white primer. I was priming my uh, Bunny Fighter ME109 that I'm doing over Christmas just for the fun of it. Also priming my 60, 69 con Firebird convertible in white. UMP slash Steinler as white primer. I love it. It's funny, I heard someone, someone the other day made a comment. And he couldn't get on with UMP primer, and I commented back, Have you tried Steinorez? And he said, Yeah, Steinorez white is great. And I said, Really? Because they're both the same thing. And he never commented again. Some people just need to learn before they speak. Figure out which way to do this. There we go. And these are fitting together really well once you get some glue on them. They're welding together really nice. Squeeze it together, make sure it's lined up. And the front part is the most important part because the back part's going to be covered by fin. And I don't mean the character from Star Wars. 
Everybody seen the new Star Wars? I'll be seeing it tomorrow, hopefully. Heard good things about it. Fortunately, I haven't heard any spoilers, which is good. And since I haven't seen it, I can't give you any. And even if I could, I wouldn't. It's something everyone needs to experience for themselves. Bombs are assembled. Let's put some tail fins on these big ones. A little more cleanup, and of course, I do have plenty of sanding sticks. If I needed to get in and sand some of this. But none of my sanding sticks from any of my companies will reach into these tiny little areas. So, if any of you sanding stick manufacturers can find a way to make a good sanding stick, not one of those stupid sanding needles, but a good sanding stick that's that narrow, that won't fall apart. I'd buy them. Okay. Look at how well that fit. Line it up. Here's the attachment point, so you want to have them lined up on there. Again, a little glue is going to spin all around. Same with this one. Square it up. A little bit of glue with the capillary action or capillary action if you're an American. I hang out with British people so much that I start speaking like them. I just wish they'd learn how to say aluminum. Right, Ivan? It's a test to see if Ivan's watching. So once we get these other four bombs put together, I thought there were a lot more bombs, but apparently not. I think if I want to, and I might, I think Edward makes some resin bombs for this kit. Because I'd like to have some bombs in the bomb bay, and then on the diorama have some bombs in the bomb trailer. Like it's just loaded this one. And it's off to load another. But we shall see. Careful getting these cleaned up because these thins, fins are relatively thin and you don't want to cut through them. And you want to be slow and easy because you don't want to cut through your thumb either. Which I'm sure plenty of us have thumb related and finger related and modeling knife injuries. Fortunately, I play guitar and have played for years and I have some calluses on mine so I'm a little better off than most. Alright, just like with the big ones, square them up. A little dab of plastic magic. Make sure you're on the right end, not on the fuse end. Or else you break the fuse. All right. Six bombs completed. And Bombay parts are on sprue D. So you know, I tape up all my, put a little label on them because 
My eyes aren't as good as they used to be, even with glasses, and there's the D right there. So, D7, D... D7 and two D8s. D7 and two D8s. If you've ever built the 48 scale Ravel kit, it also has a Bombay. Almost exactly like this, funny enough. But that kit's going on, what, 50 years old, 40 years old. I first built it when I was a teenager, which was 35 years ago. So there needs to be a new 48 scale coming out. I hope so. Ravel. Tamiya. I don't think Tamiya will. But Hobby Boss Trumpeter might. Make sure these are nice and smooth. And they are. You don't want to move any points you shouldn't. We've all done that before, removed attachment points that we shouldn't have removed. Or, most of us have. I can't say all. I'm sure there are some outstanding modelers out there who've never made mistakes. I am not one of them. I have made plenty of mistakes. You notice know, so I put my knife here and it rolls that way. That way it won't stab me in the foot. So I put it here and it rolled that way and the other stab me in my big belly or in my foot. And I don't want either of those to happen. So this part sits up like this. And there's a seam line going across there I don't like, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now, I don't, on my videos, on my build to videos, I'm not going to overly endorse or condone or put down any product. I like all modeling products and I think everybody can work together. I think everyone's had good ideas. And good training. And I use everybody's tools. Okay. So, they're up like this. You got these attachment points right here. That attach right here. Right? Right. Yep, just like that. I said, just like that. And then these attach on the bottom. So again, capillary capillary action. Gonna sit for a second. Take a bite. Turn over. Same thing on the bottom. It attached flush with the bottom. Okay, same for the other side. Get that lined up in there.
can squeeze too hard, he'll do what I just did and pinch it right off. Those should both be aligned. Touch there, touch there. There you go. That's this one. Put it to the side, and now we're going to work on these two D2 and D9, D3 and D9. Again, D sprue. Oh, there are more bombs right here. Cool. Well, let me get these together first and then we'll go. So you got D2 and D3 right here next to each other. which grit I wanted to use to get the level of smoothness I was looking for. You see I'm very gentle with my knife. I let the blade do the work. I don't really pull on it too much. Same with the sanders. I don't push down on them. I let them do the work. I almost forgot about those ends that have to slide into something. They had attachment points on them too. Didn't want to come and have to deal with them later. This one seemed to cut off a little bit nicer. And then so back when I started modeling, which was in the dark ages, we really didn't have sanding sticks. We had to use sandpaper that we snuck out of our daddy's garage. So we had to learn to be able to trim things neater with our knives. And I don't really have sprue cutters either. Just use your basic wire cutters. Okay. So. It's got one side. Let me see. It's got attachment points there and there, which are here for this one. And then the points in the bottom of the leg. So this is going to sit right. I said this is going to sit right in there like that. a little to the bottom. And it's squared and ready to go. 
Cat wants attention. Make sure you get it the right way up and down too. Little dab will do ya. Oops. Early night. There we go. Bottom. That one's done. I'm not going to do those bombs right now because we've already done some bombs. I'll do those off camera later. I'm not going to do these yet because I want to paint those before I touch on that bulkhead. See what some chairs look like. Screw F. So we've got two and two. That would be four. F thirty nine and F forty. Looks like there's three. F-39 is 3, F-40 is, where's the other leg? So I've got legs, 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 39, 40, 40, 40, 40. I only need to do two right now anyway, so. Well, let's do two to start with. We'll worry about it later. And for our next step, we need part 41, which is the seat backs. So we'll take off two of those. And I dropped one that I'll have to pick up in a minute. Okay. Got an attachment point here that needs to come off. The main thing I want to check is that they sit level. I lost my legs. I don't want to lose my legs. Right, Mark? Lots of inside jokes going on here. But if you watch the live show, you'll have an idea what some of those are.
nice and smooth. This sander's got a really coarse side and a relatively fine side, so. Don't need the coarse side. Okay. That's close. Hold the bottom. For me, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drop of cement in there. Sit it right on the seat. Or sit it right on the legs. Drop a cement. Sit it right on the legs. It's a level that way, and it was easy. These seat backs have a slot in them for the top part. So I'm going to do basically the same thing. Take a seat back, drop a cement in it. Let's get that backwards. See, I try to get cocky and look what happened. So let's try this another way. Glue. Squared up. Sat down. There we go. Got two seats there. Let's see where seats go there. I'm not worry about those windows right now. I'm gonna do that right now. There's more seats. Now that's why, because one of them has a different type of legs on it. Not gonna do the guns or the ball tour it. I'm not going to do anything with the wings right now because a lot needs to go in there. But, can do the elevators. E1, 2, 3, and 4. One, two, three, and 4. And you notice these aren't primered because they don't primer the outside of the aircraft until it's all together. So it can be a consistent primer. I find if I primer things in sections when I have to primer and color any or everything. It tends to get a little patchy sometimes. Same with cars, that's why I attach the hoods before I primer them. See, attach the hood, primer it all together. Keeps consistency. Same when painting. Control surfaces are all one piece, so they don't need to be sub assembled. Now, when checking on parts like wings and fuselages, but mainly wings because they're big flat areas, you got to check the ejector pin marks, see if they're sticking up. Because if they're sticking up, they could interfere with the attachment. Same thing here, there's attachment points where you're going to have to put the control surface. You want that as flat and smooth as possible. And most of these ejector pins are sunk in, so it won't be a problem. After I scrape off 
a little bit of ejector pin mark here, or sorry, attachment point here. I'll sand it carefully. I also don't want to mess up the shape of it. You can see there's one right there in the middle. And there. We're attached to the plane. Under here again, this one's got a little bit of a raise, so we'll sand that out. I like to run a sander over all the edges just to make sure they're flush. Again, these are my ways. I've been doing it for more time than I can think about. I like this one because it's completely flat. It's one size. You can see when I ran across there, it started to take that down, so that would have interfered. Again, I'm not putting any pressure on. I'm just making sure everything's flat. Now, this one here. I'm using the core side because I just want to get rid of that completely. Now one thing I noticed when I was going across with like this, this attachment point's up. I don't know if that's going to interfere or not, but well, it's something to keep in mind. And it's up on this one too, so I'm thinking not. And when doing this here, you don't want to mess up your attachment pins. Unless you're one of those who cuts out their attachment pins, then go ahead by all means. This one's sucked down, so I'm going to worry about it. I'm not sure if the other part of the attachment pin is going to rub across there, so I'm going to take it out just to be safe. Now, with my fine sander here I want to get in here make sure where those attachment points were it's all cleaned up so it doesn't interfere with the control surface Okay, put them together. That's a beautiful fit there. A little bit of a seam there. That's a good fit all around. Very good fit. Plastic Magic. Right in there. I probably should have put a little on the attachment points before I put them together. But I wasn't thinking. Probably do that on the next one. Again, be careful because you do not want fingerprints. And here's where I'm going to have to switch to the extra thing because I want this to pull up into that joint right there. And capillary action, capillary action will just suck that right up. You see there's none there. But it's all together. Oops. And I'll take a little extra thin and get it right in where that seam is. It'll suck it under too. One down. Perfect fit. First test fit. Again, great seam. Great seam. Now this time I am going to put a dollop in each of those holes just to get that center bite the cat hair out of there oh, beautifully those just laid right in there look at it no seam whatsoever again plastic magic here And then along this part here, 
push together. Add the extra thin. Suck up into that join. There we go. Two elevators done. And I think that's all the sub assemblies we can really do. Which is good because we're up 45 minutes. So we're going to end part two right there. Thanks for watching. Where's my other seat? Sander, 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 elevator, elevator, seat. Uh, my other seat. Please be more careful than I am. I'm going to go finish the bombs, finish the rest of the seats, and go from there. Part three will happen sometime later next week, hopefully, unless Christmas interferes. Thanks for watching. I hope you're finding this entertaining and maybe even slightly helpful. There we go. Thanks for watching. Now go out and build yourself a kit. And show us, show the world your builds. Thanks. Have a good Christmas.